Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things picking it up, uh, capturing some smooth draw work using a bamboo tablet, using actually Camtasia, though smooth draw will work, or any other capture device which will allow you to put your stuff out to YouTube. I'm using the standard um, mic in my Mac, uh, iMac. Again, these are not the tools that people are going to have outside, so I will try this again. Um, using this uh, more uh, mundane technology such as a OLPC. But enough said, the content here that I want to cover, if you would, is this question of the metric standards or the standards, so metric science standards, or basically the standards, metric standards. But more importantly, I think I want to cover this concept of science basics right so what is the basic language of science and it turns out that that basic language everything can be in physical science can be brought down to mass I'm sorry usually it's distance we talk about distance mass time temperature Mass, time, temperature, current, luminosity, probably will misspell this, luminosity, and moles or amount. There's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we won't talk about George Carlin here, but this is where we typically would in an adult classroom. All right, so we have distance on this side. We're going to talk about the SI units. And the SI units, I'll go ahead and just like Sal Khan does every now and then, I will switch. Though the point of this is to not necessarily do what Sal does, but be inspired by what him and the folk at Learning Equality and others around the world are doing with this technology. So distance is generally meters. Mass, the standard is kilograms and not as taught to my daughter, grams though that has been corrected because the classroom experience does make the online experience and the online experience does make the classroom experience but the folks at Learning Equality are not just dealing with those who have access to all of these tools they want to get out and the folk that have perhaps just a classroom experience or in many parts of the world maybe just an online experience so the best this both going on because Learning is at best an interpersonal experience. So here it is, time is seconds. Temperature is Celsius. Current is amps or amperes, amperes, should do this better. Luminosity is candelas, can, and you can do stuff obviously on an engine like this and then edit cut. So I'm going to go back now to my pen. Candelas. And moles are moles. Now the point of this video is the fact that we tell kids that we use only these. Let me go ahead and erase one out because this is badly written. And then all around them they see in the US at least not these. So they see them sometimes but at all reality most of the teachers I'm going to say are not completely versed in it, even just these seven standards as they would be more or less in the imperial unit so I'm going to switch color again I'm trying to go to red here and the kicker with some of the device you want to get would be what colors to use because some of this doesn't necessarily pick up so much out on the web but this is going to be SI this is going to be what we like to call imperial sometimes it's called a foot pound seconds but that gives it away so distance the standard typically is feet mass is the one that everyone doesn't know and I'm going to put it down here as a given it's slug and we'll talk about why the basic unit should not be considered the pound mass and it has to do with this equation F equals MA force equals mass times acceleration so we're going to come back to the slug time is still seconds 
Temperature, sure, you could say Fahrenheit, but it's probably not even that. Current is still amperes. Luminosity, maybe candle power. You'll see that some of the over here in the imperial system, they don't really have the standards. Really what I'm going at is the fact that if you just know the relationship between distance, time, and mass, and time being is done, you can get a lot of the rest of this covered. So luminosity, I'll just say candle power. And moles are just moles. So we're going to target these two right now. for a couple of different reasons. The first one we're going to target is the distance in meters and feet. Now that's such a, a lot of people memorize it one way or the other, but as a rule, the exact number by declaration is 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. What? I thought you said they were meters and feet. Well, they are, but this in turns out is the declared exact relationship between meters and feet, international feet at least. Now when you get into survey feet, it gets a little louder. And so eventually many people learn it's 3.28 feet equals one meter. But that's not necessarily the one we teach from the very beginning and it, we teach it from the very beginning because it is exact. This is exact. So. The relationship between distance is given most best by these two and then a little bit of conversion uh, and reevaluation. So it basically it would be, uh, if you want to know it, so it would be 2.54 centimeters times 12 equals a foot. And more, li more likely you probably want to very quickly learn this is 25.4 millimeters equals one inch. So you get down to the fact that really most of science likes to talk in millimeters and then meters as we jump up on the, on the thousands. So we talk about meters, kilometers, megameters, gigameters, if you would. All right, so let me go ahead and erase that. You can see that this can be an iterative process. I would erase this, but sometimes you just want to put the stuff out. So the first one we're going to go back to is one inch equals 25.4 millimeters. Now, it's taught in the US as one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, but immediately making this connection in fifth grade is still a great idea, or earlier if you would, if you've been working in the shop on your robots. All right, so the one that people are really have the hardest time with, I believe, is the kilograms to slug. So let's now talk about the kilogram. Well, a kilogram is defined as basically the mass of water at four degrees Celsius that is essentially four inches by four inches by four inches, a decimeter by a decimeter by a decimeter. But what one person can kind of start with is that one liter of water has a mass of one kilogram. And if you refine this to be particular water, particular temperature, it's 1.000000 kilograms. All right. So the other thing you can then go back to is the one liter of water has a weight of 2.205 pounds. Now, wait a second, pounds, you're talking force here. Well, you'll come back to it later. There's a way to remember that one uh, slug is 14.59 kilograms, but this isn't the way to do it. So all of a sudden now you can eventually know that one slug mass on earth is about 32.2 pounds force. And from these connections and one more, that one liter is also 9.8 newtons, you can get to and play around with 
this important concept of being able to tie what you're learning in school, metric, into what you know on the world, feet, gallons, etc., but also the thing that's being left out in terms of slugs being and giving you a one-to-one -one relationship between everything in this seven standards. So distance, mass, time, temperature, current, luminosity, moles, and that needs to be work. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off with the other one thing that is the next step up from the seven things, and that's the 13 things, and I'm going to draw it out here now. Again, this is the type of thing that's going to flow off the web and then be graded and cut up and remixed and whatever else. I won't even talk about why I do my 13 things this way, but I do. And at one point we called this the circle of units. We do it this way. Uh, and we start here with specific gravity and angular displacement and distance and area and volume and mass and force and work or energy and power, pressure, torque, density, and unit weight or weight density. So once you learn the 13 standards, then you learn, I'm sorry, the seven standards, you then work up to these kind of first set of derived standards. Specific gravity is unitless and angular measurement is unitless. And another thing that's left way too long um, with students, they don't get that in the US until uh, junior year in high school. Though if they start programming, they learn it a lot earlier, where the real true unit of angular measurement is the radian. And radians are unitless. Distance is a vector. Area, volume, mass, force, if you end as you start drawing, this is also a vector. Work is not a vector. Power is not a vector. Pressure is not a vector. Torque is a vector. Mass density and weight density or unit weight. So one then works once you got these kind of derived concepts you come up with derived units and all of a sudden you want to have a one-to-one -one correspondence I'm going to point out here distance we're going to have our one-to-one -one correspondence meters and feet and our one-to-one -one correspondence in mass being uh, slugs and kilograms and force of course is going to be pounds force and Newtons and from there everything flows. Alright I'm gonna go ahead and post this up it's rambly poorly written but made in real time covering just the push that if we learn the base of water you know one liter of water cut into a square if you would we get and can get the students this really prime thing that if you don't know makes the rest of the derivations much harder as you go up at least through physical science and my training as an engineer may have um, been much much better had I gotten this a lot earlier thanks for listening